All right, monitoring. Okay. So we've actually, believe it or not, I've done all of this now, pretty much. Even did the inverter. And we're gonna talk a little bit about the panel there and we're gonna go into monitoring. Why is monitoring so important? You wanna be in the know. So, question earlier on was, Jeff, I have a voltmeter on my boat. I'm good, I don't need a battery monitor. I'm like, oh, okay, interesting. You must be aware then, and we're just sharing knowledge that we both know, but let's just remind ourselves that battery voltage is only an indication of capacity if your battery has neither been charged nor discharged for a 24 hour period. And therefore, when you're reading your voltmeter, you must stop all discharge and discharge for a 24 hour period. Let your battery voltage to come to rest like a, heart in, like a resting heart rate, right? Wait 24 hours, look at the voltmeter and then make an assessment on the capacity and then start using your batteries again. Now that seems really plausible and practical on a boat. No, clearly. The only time that's really plausible is on an engine battery. Think how often that makes sense. You start your engine, you use your engine, you stop. 24 hours later, you go and see your voltmeter. You've neither used your engine battery, nor started it, nor charged it, probably for 24 hours. Good, no problem. Now your battery capacity with a voltmeter on your engine battery is doable. How in the world are you gonna be able to infer battery capacity off of your house battery when it's used? It's like saying, oh, you know what, Jeff? I'm gonna figure out if you're healthy or not, looking at your heart rate at any given moment. And I'm not gonna take into consideration what you're doing as an activity level. Oh, weird. Why is your heart rate 160? Oh, well, I'm spinning. Oh, okay. Why is your heart rate uh, 145? Oh, well, actually, I'm going up a bunch of stairs and I'm running, I'm working out. Oh. Heart rate is a function of activity level. Volts is a function of what you've done doing now, what you did just a little short while ago, what you've been doing for the last 24 hours. So you can't use volts as an indication of capacity. It's a crude method of knowing, am I in the ballpark? That's all it is. Am I in the ballpark? One thing about AC volts, which is great, because volts, AC volts don't have batteries is having an AC voltmeter on your boat so you know before you connect to shore power if you have low volts coming in. Because believe it or not, in destination marinas, right, places where they're only open two months of the year and let's be honest, they're struggling, they're not gonna have the best power grid on the dock in the middle of nowhere. And you might come to a marina where there's a bunch of 100 footers that decide to plug in and are running the world like they're connected to North America on the continent and they're on a real grid, and the voltage is dropping, like free falling. The generator can't keep up with the demand of all these boats. So you might be plugging into a marina that only has 195 volts, but you don't know that. The marina operator is not BC Hydro. It doesn't have an engineer on the dock measuring what's happening. It assumes that everything's fine. Now, if you plug in your boat to 95 volts, do you think your AC appliances are gonna have a good time? No. So before you connect to a dock, you always want to know what the output voltage is at that marina, right? The one you're going to connect to. And that's why the code says that you should have an AC voltmeter connected to the line side before you even turn the breaker on. You want to know what the AC volts is before you turn the breaker on. So you go, oh yeah, 120, 115, I'm good. Turn the breaker on. Question? Does an isolation transformer change any of what you just said? Nope, nope. Not unless you have a boost, which is complicated, but an isolation transformer does not change voltage per se unless you have a boost isolation transformer. What isolation tra I'm not, you know what, I'm not gonna go there. What would the risk to the isolation transformer be if the voltage nope. were less? That's fine, there's none. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna go there, I can't, can't. Time, I know, unless you guys are willing to spend the evening with me, yeah. but not gonna happen, can't go there. I wanted to do isolation transformer. There's so much stuff I had to leave, I can't do it. So basically the big thing about, we can talk later on, I can be here forever, but not everyone I'm assuming. DC voltmeter, big thing that you gotta ask yourself. This is a common, common, common question that I get all the time, and this mystery. My battery monitor, my battery is at 12.6, my DC meter on my panel is at 12.4. That is because of voltage drop. The pressure, 
the voltage downstream of something is not the same thing as the pressure at the source, right? It's like anything, right? You start water, it's called head pressure. You start something and you go down, the pressure is not going to be same downstream. So when you're looking at voltage on your boat and you're looking at meters, what voltage are you looking at? Are you looking at the voltage at a load, at an appliance, like a, a panel, a distribution point? Or are you looking at voltage at the battery? Right? That's very different. So that think of mine and know where that voltage is. Because if you're basing your decisions on if your batteries are charged or not charged, based on volts at the panel, you might be off by 0 0.2, 0 0.3 volts. So that's really big. These new OLEDs are amazing. Old uh, battery monitor or voltmeters had to be, you had a source selector and you were normally, they were momentary because they actually draw power when they're on. The new ones, the OLED, are so low power draw that you can leave them on all the time. They're like milliamps. That's an OLED one. See, I installed one of those always on, on my engine battery on my boat. Always there. Because I think information is power. And I want to know that my engine battery is always there. That thing is like, I don't know, 20, 30 bucks. It's like amazing. Tiny, this big. Awesome. Awesome. And I know all the time, I'm always looking at my DC panel. I'm like, oh, look at my engine battery, 12.8, 12.82, 12.78. 12 like, beautiful. This stuff is crude. It's sort of like, did I hit the ball in the ballpark? Yeah, kind of. Like, you're not going to make any decisions on this. It's like, do I have a battery or I don't? Is it sort of charging, I think, or is it dead? Like, you've got like maybe three, four set points with an analog meter. There are very, very crude ways of knowing what's happening with your batteries.